decide what to do, but everything which is decided has to be decided with the maximum consensus, thinking in the long run and making all the policies sustainable. But as I say, with safety nets addressed to the population which, uh, who need the best. So as I, as, um, in continuation, I am going to try to answer some of the things that have been uh, written in the, in the draft agenda, and then we will go back to what is needed to do, in my opinion, when there is a transition to democracy and there is a crisis like the one we are suffering now. So in the draft agenda, I'm, I'm going to, to tell some of these answers simply as bullet points. Trade-offs between short-term employment needs and long-term growth. As I have said, policies should have designed for the long run, but with enough flexibility, and this is my, is going to be my last remark, the flexibility of the economies with enough flexibility to be resilient to the disturbances in the short run. Workers are demanding pay increases. Wages and salaries moderation is a must to increase competitiveness. It's even more important now than it was in 1977 because with the globalization, external competitiveness of an economy is the most important thing. So and to get, regain competitiveness, if you devaluate, but you continue having high inflation, then the effects of the devaluation disappear in one year. So wage moderation with the consensus of the social agents and the trade unions. <coughs> and salaries and wages increases should be linked to productivity gains not to past inflation. If you relate wages increases to past inflation, you are increasing inflation again. And of course, it's crucial to, to avoid excessive segmentation of the labor market in what refers to the rights and working conditions. You cannot have informal economy versus formal economy because this is very, very harmful for, for competitiveness. You cannot have different, very different conditions, working conditions or salaries between permanent and temporary co contracts because everything that uh, means an excessive segmentation reduce, reduces the overall productivity of the economy. And even more, makes that the adjustment rely only on a specific group of the population. So fair and extensive burden sharing, which is an important issue for motivation and has to be applied to wages, working conditions, and taxes. Flexibility is the quick question for a modern labor market. So protect the workers, not protect the job. Protect the workers in the sense to give the workers with a social safety net, even if they are un unemployed, but not try to protect the jobs in a specific industry because walking debts, banks, or companies, industries, are very, very costly for an economy. So internal flexibility also allows to push for adjustments in salaries, or in working hour, hours to reduce layoffs. Use, instead of temporary contracts, part-time contracts, which may have the, the effect of increasing the number of young people who have a job. Instead of minimum wage, which may harm uh, some companies' competitiveness or even prevent economic activities to start, minimum revenue related to family needs. So don't push on the companies for minimal wages, but push for minimum revenues to the families. Of course, public wages have a very important demonstrative effect for the private sector. <coughs> 
and progress of public employment to cushion for adverse uh, demand shocks should only be temporary and with, with the emphasis in the improvement of the human capital of the worker. So an important part of the overall economic policy of these uh, transition periods has to be fiscal soundness and so avoid an unaffordable increase in the number of public employees. On the other hand, public investment in infrastructure is the item of the public budget with the highest fiscal multipliers. So invest, use the budget, even if we, you may have budget deficit, to invest in infrastructure. Now starting with telecoms infrastructure, imp improve the productivity and competitiveness of the country and of the whole economy. Make room for trade unions and employers' associations to perform their role. Labor market reforms and structural reforms in general are more effective when the quality of labor relations is high. Of course, wage subsidies, I have said that, is a risky way to go. But if any, they should be confined to groups with specific and clear difficulties in hiring. And in this sense, uh, training programs should always be part of any labor market reform program. Human capital improvement, education, is an income equalizing factor. In fact, education is the best way to reduce inequalities. And in the case of youth, human capital is crucial. So education should be adapted to the needs of labor demand. Apprenticeship contracts have, uh, uh, is, are very useful. And in this case, apart from facilitating a dual system, partly working, partly learning, some transitory uh, measures uh, with public support to labor uh, costs of firms could be envisaged in the case of youth to compensate for the lack of experience of this group of people. And in that sense, use all the resources you have. And not only your resources, your public resources, but also the private resources. If a big company, big international company, wants uh, uh, to, to, to have a factory in your country, probably they have a very, very modern equipment, a very modern technology. Make them let this technology and this equipment to be used not only for the workers of the company, but also for other people who want to learn skills. So try to use the maximum of the resources. In the case of women, wage inequality and inequality has to be addressed through legislation. And legislation that has also to provide for decent jobs all over, not only for women. But to enhance the employment of women and to reduce the discontinuity of careers, it is important to have social networks, including childcare facilities, and to reduce the time a skilled woman is out of the labor market. And in this effect, flexible working hours also improve women's employability. So these were the questions that were included in the, in the draft. So as a final remark, because I do not want to be very long, consensus, maximum consensus. Don't be tired of looking for consensus. This is the most rewarding tool you may use. Second, you have to fix the economies. If not, every market or labor policy will be, will be unsustainable. The third, I should say, is define your type of economy. The Spanish economy is included in the Constitution, which is a social market economy, which means market economy, 
with social safety nets, but also the government has the right to design the general economic policies. This is the intervention of the government through the laws and not directly through the uh, productive sector. <clears throat> Wages moderation, because you have uh, to regain competitiveness with a sound basis. Safety nets in the, in the way of social welfare. Some public goods are much better if they are universal. So I have uh, been Minister for Health and I might say that it's much better to have universal health services, although the services are not very extensive, than health services only addressed to a part of the population. Education, which I think is uh, the most uh, important thing to regain uh, the future, and of course in what refers to uh, a financial system, which may help the economy, sound financial system, but giving loans, very, very much regulated, but accomplishing the main function of a financial system, which is give loans to the economy. If not, if they do not that, do that, try to put in practice a, a state financial system for a while, because the most important thing is to give loans to the small and medium companies. Imagination, effectiveness, self-employment, which is, I think, uh, one of the big tools of any economy now, and this is why I have said that infrastructure telecommunications is, not, is now so important. And, of course, flexibility. If you have <coughs> very, very robust economy but it's not flexible, it will resist some of the shocks, but if there is one big shock, it will break. Whereas a flexible economy may absorb the shocks. Perhaps it bends a little with every shock, even if it's not very, very big. But if one big shock comes, and normally they will come, this uh, flexible economy will be flexible enough to absorb these shocks in some time. Well, up to here. And then, of course, uh, I may discuss and elaborate a little bit more on that, because, of course, uh, there are many things that maybe even in Spain we have to continue doing. Thank you.